Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I am Todd Anderson, joined today by Ross Merriam. Got Rob over in the booth. Say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Uh, today we are brought to you by Star City Games as well as Carnox Chairs. Make sure to check out uh, carnox.com slash SCG. Check out these sweet chairs uh, you just, every time. Every time. That's fine. We should just do a show like this. Uh, it's hard to play Magic leaning back that far. Plus, the further I lean back, the larger my gut looks, and it already looks pretty large. Okay, okay. I'll come back. <laughs> Uh, so today we are uh, jumping headfirst into M20 Standard in preparation for this weekend's tournament, uh, SCG Worcester, where uh, we are going to have 15 rounds of Standard and a top eight. I'm going to be bringing you some coverage action with Ryan Overturf and two other people who I'm not sure. I'm going to guess Cedric and Patrick. No, Emma it's not. and uh, Emma and Matthias. Yes, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm it's just wrong. I'm just wrong. It's, fine. it's the first release we can show. He hasn't done it in a long time. Yeah. 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 I guess maybe that's why I thought. Uh, yeah. So we have uh, haven't had a, a major standard tournament, obviously, uh, with the set yet because it's, it's not released. Uh, over the last few sets, though, we've had um, like a, an MCQ or something on Magic Online the previous weekend. But instead, we just have a deck dump and a bunch of people posting, like hitting number one on Arena. Uh, on Twitter, so we have a, a, a good number of decks that we can choose from to work with, a lot of them featuring a lot of new cards from M20. Yeah, a surprising impact so far uh, from the core set. Normally, you know, the standard is so big at this point, the decks are so well-tuned, adding one set doesn't have as much of an impact, but this one seems to, you know, be uh, really important and it's really changing things. You know, there's some effect uh, of people just wanting to play and try out new cards, and maybe they, you know, end up going back to their espers and their mono reds uh, before the tournament because they don't find something they like too much. But I've heard a lot of buzz around Risen Reef and some of the elementals, a lot of buzz around Vampires, which is a deck that I played last week with uh, Corey Bo uh, Bowmeister. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that Vampire deck looks pretty good. There's a couple of ways to go with that. And then a few other options as well that we're going to be exploring today. So. Yeah, I think the one of the key things to note is that when it comes to the last set before a rotation, a lot of times Wizards likes to go out on a limb and give you some synergies that are only going to be in standard for a few months. Um, I know a long time ago we actually had Ponder and Preordain in the same standard format alongside Splinter Twin, a full-blown the yeah. Rex Arc Splinter Twin combo deck in standard. And but Shrine of months. Demonic Tutor. Yeah, uh, but that was, that was only for uh, two months or so, and this time around it's going to be effectively the same thing. We have the rest of the summer and one or two months during the fall where we're going to be able to play full-fledged tribal decks. We got uh, more pirates, we got more dinosaurs, we got more vampires, and they're really powerful additions to these decks. This, the new Soren Planeswalker is an insane card for vampire tribal. Being able to minus and put in the five drop that draws a bunch of cards is really nice. Um, and then this new dinosaur Marauding Raptor is just nuts. Like, what the heck? Yeah, Marauding Raptor was impressive uh, last week. I played a Gruul Dinosaurs deck uh, against Corey, and you're going to be starting off with a Junda Dinosaurs deck. So we, we include the three mana 7 6. Yeah, so uh, I believe it's Rotting Regisaur, which is a great name, by the way. Uh, three mana 7 6. Clearly, when this enters the battlefield, you have to sacrifice a creature and discard your hand, right? Something like that. No, just at the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. That's it. Just and if you don't have a, a any cards in your hand, it's fine. Yeah, yeah it's not Nothing. discard or sacrifice. It's yeah, just discard. So, um, uh, hmm. incredible rate on that card, and it's very big plays very nicely with Marauding Raptor. You know, yes. you, you the initial thought with that card is I want to play all creatures with three or more toughness. Right, with maybe the exception of Lanor Elves. Well, the, the exception in this deck, and I want to point that out, we have two of the same type of mana-producing creature. Odepec Huntmaster lets all your dinosaur spells cost one less. Marauding Raptor allows all your creature spells to cost one less. So we have two of that red two-drop that shrinks the cost of uh, every other creature in your deck. Now, they don't really work well together because Marauding Raptor just eats the Odepec Hunter. But if you have one on the battlefield, that's all you really need. Yeah, and you, know, you, you can play... Huntmaster turn two if you draw both of them and then play a one man Marauding Raptor the next turn and have two mana to play a four drop. Right. You can play a Rift Jar Raptor immediately, then draw a card. So both of these cards facil facilitate either, you know, playing your four drop on turn three like you would with any other mana creature, yep. or potentially playing two creatures on turn three and getting two mana out of the deal immediately, which is a really, really strong uh, line uh, in the early turns, is getting to those double spell turns before your opponent, especially with giant dinosaurs. Yeah, I mean, I think the the one thing you pointed out but while we were talking before the, the broadcast was Marauding Raptor is a mana-producing creature 
that attacks for large chunks of damage. And I'm not talking about like, oh, it attacks for two, so like a two, one, like Paradise Druid sometimes has yeah. relevant power because it attacks for two. Brawny Raptor can attack for six on turn three pretty easily. Yeah. And attacks for four consistently. So yeah. that, that is, an, that's already an impressive rate. You know, two mm -hmm. mana, four power. Uh, I don't know if we even have a creature like that in standard. No. We're, we're used to two mana, three power, usually with some upside, like a Dato Vanguard. Mm -hmm. But this is two mana, four power, also with upside in that it accelerates out your other creatures. So I've been very impressed with it. I uh, was impressed with it last week during mm -hmm. that show uh, and expect it to continue to be so here. You no. know, Sorry, real quick. Uh, what, what's, what's really cool about Marauding Raptor 2, and then I've seen, uh, well, y'all had a version last week, and I know Jerry Thompson's been playing a little bit on Arena with a version that has a bunch of the enrage mechanic, uh, like the three mana, two, three, that when it uh, gets enraged, you search for a land, so it like, yeah. ramps you extra. Um, the only one we're playing in this particular list is going to be uh, Riptar Raptor. Raptor, just to, to, to cycle a little bit. But I, I think Marauding Raptor is just... Nuts. Yeah, definitely uh, an excellent addition to the Dinosaur Tribe and something that it, it's been missing so it could be aggressive uh, while also ramping out some of the bigger creatures. You're going to be playing against, on my side, a deck that uh, Yeoman 5 has been working on and posted to uh, was posted on Arena Decklist. This mm -hmm. is a Golgari sort of graveyard Molder Hulk deck, something we saw last fall, but they never really came to fruition. But they got another enabler in this Vulture that mills four cards uh, and gains you a little bit of life. And then we have Blood for Bones, a really powerful card that lets you uh, gain access to your singletons really quickly. Mm -hmm. Normally you'd have to, you know, mill your deck over, then play your Molder Hulk, rebuy your Memorial to Folly, play your Memorial, rebuy your creature the following turn when it untaps, and then cast the creature. Now we can, you know, fill our deck and then cast Blood for Bones get whatever card we need immediately, whether it be, you know, another Molder Hulk or uh, a Lotless Giant to dome our opponent for a bunch or a Ravenous Chupacabra to deal with a creature and then get what we need for the following turn back to our hand, mm -hmm. really set up our next two turns with it. So really powerful card, a way to sacrifice Stitcher Supplier, which is nice and get that extra mill. So, uh, or, you know, just set up, you know, rebuy Wild Growth Walker, get Jade Light into my hand. Uh, and get that package going as well. From what I've seen and how the card is felt, I think Blood for Bones feels about the closest we've had to Zombify in a very long time. At the very least, it, it feels a little bit like Unbarrel Rights in the uh, kind of chains that it creates with you know bringing something back, getting something else back, and just getting that uh, value. Like the this the stack is using effectively all the pieces of the pie to to create this engine, uh, so to speak, where you know it it, it becomes really hard to beat it through traditional means like you basically have to beat them with like a teferi emblem or just going way way over the top with something like maybe omniscience or just having very large creatures like prime, prime speaker galta or whatever it's called prime prime hunter galta whatever you know galta I mean. primal hunger there it is anyway your deck looks really cool i'm excited to, to see it play out uh do you want to go ahead and get to the match? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I'm a little worried at how the creatures are just normally going to match up. You know, I'm playing a lot of two twos and three ones, and you're playing some seven sixes and yeah, 12 but you're, twelves. Yeah, but I don't really have removal. You're, you know, your wild growth walkers can get out of control. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I fully expect like some blood for bones shenanigans to just keep getting back uh, J Light Rangers and wild growths and just gaining a million points of life. Whatever. Okay. Anyway, do we got anything, Rob, or should we go ahead and start? Uh, yeah, we got some questions. Let's uh, do like one or two just while I'm sure. shuffling. Yeah. Asteus wants to know, uh, had, do you like it when they print certain color hosers into sets such as the Ceratops and the Cerulean Drake and just the protection for different colors? Or do you think that they make sideboarding less interesting because they just seem like obvious picks for certain metas? Uh, I like them for... I like how they affect like modern, right? Like I, I loved... Uh, rending volley as a way to, to, to for modern to have a really cheap answer to something like Splinter Twin, but when they're in standard, it becomes really cookie cutter. Like I, I actually hate cards like Cerulean Drake. Like I, the red decks just like can't attack through it. I played against some random blue green deck uh, yesterday, and they played turn two Cerulean Drake against me, and I just like couldn't attack with my fanatical firebrands. My other creatures were like one two, and then like you know, and if I ever throw a lethal burn spell at them, they just counter it. Like. Card's insanely good, and the, one of the reasons why protection went away in the first place is because it just creates this like unkillable threat in, against monocolor decks, and it really incentivizes you to play multiple colors, which I don't know if is necessarily cool or good. Yeah, um, 
it, it sort of depends on the power level of the hoser, right? These are pretty high powered. Either you know, shifting ceratops are really enjoyable. Shifting ceratops, stupid. yeah, are just very, very good creatures. Uh, and the the spells, you know, veil of summer, uh, and that whole cycle are also you know quite high power levels. So I, I think the chance of them getting kind of annoying is pretty high because I think they're all quite good. Yeah. But it, color hosers in general, they're just something that needs a little bit of extra work in order to be appropriately balanced. Uh, Otherwise, you know, that, that just sort of restricts sideboard space because you need to make room for whichever ones are most appropriate in the metagame. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I the ones that they printed are very strong. Like uh, Fry is very good, I think. Um, the problem with it is that all the Planeswalkers that you're going to be targeting with it, draw a card to Fairy, both of them, Narset. Um, the biggest upgrade, I think, is that it can kill a Planeswalker or Lear Dombringer. And yep. I think that that's really important. Um, all the other ones are they're just really good. I you know, I don't really like the fact that you're incentivized to play four of the thing that kills a green creature in your sideboard or whatever, but like you should, because it's good. So all right, let's go ahead and get to the match. Good question by Mr. Stayus. Make sure you tag at SEG Tour if you're in the chat so Rob can see your sweet questions and you can send them over to us. Right. Well, you were gonna be on the play here because I still own the marbles, even though you beat Corey. You mean I'm gonna be on the draw? No, I'm on the draw. No, I said you're on the play, didn't I? Yeah, but you have the marbles. Oh, yeah, so I'm on the play. You're That's the how play. that works. Yeah, come on. Dude. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I, I, I'm gone for one week. I'm gone yeah. for one week. <laughs> um, my hand's I, great. My hand is fine. We got to start a memorial, which is nice, and then this will set up, hopefully, our turn three play. That was a horrible draw. Let's play Glowspore Shaman. Oh no, we needed a land. <laughs> Dude, close for shaman, so bad. It's always been bad, and it will always be bad. Start off with an Ultipec Hunter. Your turn. Okay, well, we had five draws to a land, and we've missed on four so far. Whew. Okay, let's, let's Jade Light. And... Okay. Nope, we need lands. There we go. Uh, I will gladly make this trade, so let's mash for three. 17. You're up. 15. Got him. The race is on. All right. We're going to spend one red to play a Marauding Raptor. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're gonna play a Ripjaw Raptor, trigger, draw card. <laughs> yeah. Then give it haste. We're going to give it haste and offer the trade. Yeah, I guess it, it's not really a trade. You're going to draw another card off of it. Right. But this is a matchup where I need to... Uh, Can I? No, never mind. Nothing. It's a matchup where I need to race. Not really race, but I mean, like, I need to. You need to trade. Yeah, I need to. Well, I need to do things before you go nuts. Mm -hmm. Trading does make uh, 12 12 less likely. Mm hmm. Although it's surprisingly easy to get Galt on the battlefield with Marauding Raptor, just play, like, one kind of big giant pumps this. That's, you know, somewhere around 10 power right there. Uh, what am I doing next turn? That's that's the big question, I guess. I could do... I can't really do this yet. Um, so I'd probably be doing this. That doesn't do a whole lot. No, nah, I'm going to take it. I'm going to 16. Go. I was actually kind of afraid of that. Kind of wanted you to trade. Um, let's mush for six. Hmm. Yeah, I'll go to nine. I don't think Ross has a whole lot of chip damage, but he does have uh, Wildlife Giant, which is potentially game ending. So it's possible I should just not attack with Rip Draw Raptor. So we got a sack of creature. I guess I'll sack this one. Seeing as this doesn't trade with Huntmaster. Mm -hmm. And then we return one creature to the battlefield and then one to our hand. Order is important there. So we get to return this one to the battlefield first and have you lose four. That's oh no, because this has works. to fully resolve. Yeah. So I don't know. I definitely want to get this back because we want to just apply pressure. 
And then what is going to go in my hand? Probably the motor oil. It's like not super expensive. I don't know. Whatever. J Light's fine. It is kind of expensive. Sure. Yeah, I guess if you're taking two creatures out of the graveyard. No, actually, I'm going to get the supplier. Okay. I just want a cheaper thing. So you're going to lose three. Yeah, I'm at six. Six. So that's kind of cool. Now we've got a, a lethal creature here. Yep. Pass the turn. We'll name uh, Dino. As long as I don't see a Galta here, I'll be pretty happy. I think I'm going to take quite a chunk. Yeah, I was a little afraid of that one. <laughs> yeah, that's reasonable. So this is... That's eight. This one, two, yeah, so it's 15. So if I attack with this, I draw a card, but you eat it. So I think I just hold back. And I'd go to one? Yeah, if you take it, you go to one. It's turn four. Uh -oh. Well, we're definitely blocking. And I feel like we should block this and take one less damage and have Todd discard a card. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, this does stop some creatures from entering, but not really. They're all just so big. Okay, you take seven. I go to nine. nine. Your turn. Right, it restores. Now we're in. AT. Now we're just in survival mode. Yeah, but if you fill your graveyard and find another way to get Lala Giant to dome me for six. Stitcher Supplier. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, five. It's just, mm. so I can, I can play a Molder Hulk here, but. I'll I'll want to, uh, yeah. I guess that's probably just better. Let's Molder Hulk mm -hmm. for four. We'll get to return a land. Guess we'll return a Woodland Cemetery, and pass the turn. All right, upkeep trigger the Rotting Registrar. We'll just card just stomp the ground. Makes sense. Draw for turn. Yep. All right, so all these cost two less. So let's play. Another rotting register. Mm, now I gotta do that differently. Rotting register. Shifting ceratops. Give it haste. Give this haste. This is a six. These are sevens. I just think everything I think you're yeah, doing. I'm I mean, just I mean, <laughs> so you got three blockers, you block these three, take four, eight. Yeah. Thirteen. <laughs> Uh, five. I'd, I'd overgrown two middle giant next turn, but. Start at five. <laughs> start, start five. That was sick. Rotting Raptor is really good. <laughs> it's really good. Although, I think actually Odipack Hunter was better that game. I mean, the, the Marauding Raptor getting larger to attack and present another threat was big, but giving those seven sixes haste each turn was nice. Maybe I was supposed to block the seven because that stops leaving you with the second one stops you from playing Registrar Alphas and Shifting Ceratops. Sure. It's possible. So if, I, if I'm at eight, but if, yeah, I'm still dead. If I, well, then I have two Raptors and they can get big next turn. So, like, I would have played. Uh, well, you, uh, you'd be, yeah. you'd, you'd yeah. have one of your seven six. I would just, but I would have been at eight and you would have had two four or fives coming through. Yeah. And that, that would have been enough. No, you were uh, nine, right? No, but if I blocked the other way the previous turn, I would have taken Oh, sure, sure. You would have took one more damage. Yeah. So it would have been eight, taking exactly eight. Okay. Uh, play one more pre-board, or you want to... Yeah, we'll do pre-board. That game, game is fast. Mm -hmm. What you got for me, Rob? Uh, 
Dario Spin 93, why no Drover of the Mighty? Or why did you go for Odapet Cutmaster over Drover of the Mighty? Uh, this is a just a 5 0 deck from Magic Online. Um, I think Haste, uh, I mean, Drover of the Mighty gets bigger, right? And that's kind of why we like Marauding Raptor, uh, because it actually presents as a threat later on. But I think um, this version is specifically playing um, the, the Huntmaster just because. Giving large creature chase is pretty nuts. I mean, you saw that game. My clock was increased dramatically uh, based on the ability to give Rotting Register haste um, and even Ripjar Raptor one of the turns. But Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. The haste there was super important. Yeah. All right. One or two more. Uh, yeah, Hestaeus was also wondering, uh, Ross, what did you think about maybe including Shifting Ceratops in the sideboard of your Golgari deck? Does it seem like... It should be there, even though it's not. Uh, you're such a synergy laden deck that making room for just a generic, like big creature, doesn't seem particularly important to me. Especially because this deck already has a good number of big creatures. Yeah. Uh, so you're not really lacking in that department, even though you, you know, shifting Ceratops is a powerful card. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would rather have more disruptive elements in my sideboard because the main deck is so focused on the graveyard plan. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Shooting Ceratops is quite good against um, like all the blue planeswalkers, but doesn't have protection from black, right? Still dies to cast down, and all of them moved away from counter spells, so like that part's not a huge deal. Like a Teferi plus untap two land cast cast down is a good answer to it, and it's not nearly as good as people think. But it's it is really yeah. dumb on rate for sure. Yeah, it's a very good rate. There's still removal that matches up well against it. If it's popular, people have to move to those removal spells. Yeah, and if Time Raveler ever gets banned, I'm good. We can start. If Time Raveler ever gets banned, uh, it is going to be good because uh, Counter Spells are going to come back. And then Ross, one other thing, um, what did you feel like? Uh, <clears throat> do you do you feel like it'd be worth moving to maybe? Uh, J Light Ranger, or not J Light Ranger, uh, Merfolk Branchwalker instead of the Glow Spore Shaman, or do you just want the volume? We have both in the deck. 4K, no less dose. Oh. Well, all right, never mind then. Dino, Marauding Raptor, your go. Uh, why do you have to do Dude, this? with Commune of the Dinosaurs, it's very likely to have one of your two drops on two. Unfortunately, Commune doesn't find uh, Odefect Hunt Master, but finding the, the Marauding Raptor is tight. Sure. What are you scared of? This rotting register. <laughs> um, do I want this branch walker? I don't think so. So let's put that in the graveyard. This will be a three. You gain six. I gain six. I'm at twenty six. Okay. Now the only haste thing you could play is shifting ceratops. No, you wouldn't be able to give that haste still. Right. Yeah, you should attack. So yeah, unless I think you, you should attack this. You can always trade. With yeah. This thing. All right. Seventeen me. Yep. I would be happy to make that trade. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, aside from Rotting Register, the only card we can cast this turn is Commune. So let's Commune in case we find something we want to play over the Register. So we found a Rip Jaw. We can't cast that this turn. We also found a Hunt Master, but we already have a Register Alpha in hand. So I think I'm going to take a Rip Jaw. And that'll give me some more cards with the Marauding Raptor next turn. And I don't want to shock, and the Dragon Skull comes in tapped. So let's go Dinosaur again. Play it, trigger this. And I don't think I want to trade the Marauding Raptor for the Jade Light. So we'll just say go. Okay. Get down on top of my deck. So make sure I discard. Interesting. Uh, definitely want to get this down this turn. And if that's the case, then our double spell is best here. And that sequence wants us to start with Stitcher Supplier. Okay. Then we will start with Branch. Is there like an expensive Eternal Witness in Standard? I know there's Fine Broker, but it only gets permanence. Is there a way to continually chain Blood for Bones? Uh, I don't know. I don't either. Keeping that one on top, you gain 3 yes. or 29. And then we'll keep it on top again. Okay. There's Tamio. You uh, can go. Yeah. Plus for bonus only gets creatures though, right? I was hoping like there was a creature that you could do with it. All right. Uh, discard, register, wheel, pitch, stop the ground. We got plenty of green. Let's draw. 
now we can play Red Drawn, draw a card, or we can play Red Shore Alpha this turn and just use our mana more efficiently guaranteed. Uh, dinosaur again. So now Marauding Raptor is going to be a 6-3. Yeah, I still don't think I attack with it, though. Just because I don't... I, it's really important to get the extra card out of this. So let's just... If we attack for 7, you have to double block. Could double block with these two. Yeah, I'm fine just kind of cleaning it up, maybe. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just don't let you get that synergy. Like, if I attack into these two, you get to sacrifice this with Blood for Bones, get one back, put the other one on Battlefield, make this really big. Right now, you just have the Branch Walker, so I'll just say go. Cool to play a longer game. Okay. Um, I think so. a longer game does favor Ross, but if I attack, I think that's just giving giving up. Um, so now the question for me is which one of these I want to kill. Mm. We know I have this. You probably won't kill this. I know, because I'm not. Like the watch McCall is going to be pretty good regardless. Galta, mm -hmm. but I'm at 29. I can take a hit from it and then Blood for Bone sacking this and returning it immediately and deal with a Galta that way. Oh yeah, because Blood for Bone specifically doesn't target. Yes. So you can sacrifice the thing in play, bring it back immediately, which is really cool. So yeah, let's deal with the Marauding Raptor. That card is just so good. Pass the turn. We have the rest of the board pretty well contained. Um, yeah, and stopping the card advantage is going to make the re the Rotting Regisaur's card disadvantage much more relevant. Why Why do you got to lose to me, Todd? I'm sorry. Shock. Yeah. Cool you're, you're, you're at 15. You're going to have to discard that card anyway. So, know, Which is why it's not a huge deal. Um... None of this matters. Go. Can't do anything. Walker's Walker is a pain in the buttons. Ooh. That's a neat one. Um, so let's play Glow Spore Shaman. Let's so we'll mill three. Yeah, you get to put Memorial on top of your deck if you want. I do, because then I'm going to play Jade Light Ranger and immediately draw it. Cool. And then hit a forest. So I gain six, go to 35. And then I'll play my Memorial. Okay. You can go. And we got our synergies up and running. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Just want to end this game quickly. Um, so this is a 6-8. Wait, am I dead on the crackback if I do this? Can you just soak this? One second. Yeah. 11, 13. This is only 20. You have 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 20. So I have to leave back at least one thing to block this, but you can. So I need to leave back two things. So let's just send these two. Okay. So at five mana and only the one card in hand, I don't think Todd is not in any danger of discarding any more cards to this Rotting Regisaur. So I think it's time to just eat it. Though you could have drawn exactly collision colossus some of these dinosaur decks have it i'm not sure if todd's does um could also set up this blood for bones by trading away these two for the regisaur or maybe i would just trade away these two since i already have a branch walker in the graveyard yeah i don't really want to risk the wild growth walker in combat so let's just double block okay Six, four, so that's 11, seven, minus eleven minus three is three, eight. eight is 12. Twelve here at twenty-three. 23. Oh no! Okay, here you go. So now we've got nine damn nine power here. So we can play Blood for Bone, sacking Chupacabra, return Chupacabra to the battlefield, Jade Light to hand. Chupacabra down. Your blocks don't matter, though. I'm, I'm just worried about haste. So okay. let's deal with that. And then play Jade Light. You at 29. 
Woodland and Glow Spore. That can go to the graveyard. 29. This gets two more, so we're up to seven there. We're at one there. Uh, I played a land this turn, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. And now... How much were those? Uh, I'm gonna block the marauding or the branch walker. Sure. Take eight. eight brings you to seven. seven. Pass the turn. All right. No discard for register because my hand's empty. And I drew land. I'm just gonna quit. Yeah. All righty then. So Wild Growth Walker, definitely a problem for this deck. It can get really big, but Blood for Bones there actually just prevented me from attacking uh, in multiple turns. It's possible I should have just tried to grind through, but I don't know if my deck actually has the capability of grinding through there. Yeah, you're really a go-over-the-top deck, and in that game, Wild Growth Walker went over the top of you. Right, right. So definitely something to keep in mind. Maybe in the sideboard we're going to want something like a set of Lava Coils to help deal with uh, that type of creature, but uh, we do have sideboards to, to get into, and we're not taking a break, right? Or do we need? Do it's we want to, to? Okay. Yeah, let's take like a two minute break here while we get uh, sideboards put together. And when we come back, we'll talk about the choices we made and get to the last game of the match. Hello, welcome back here to sideboarding with Golgari. What are we calling Blood Hulk? Yes. And uh, Jund Dinosaurs. Not a lot of removal in my sideboard, which is what I'm looking for. There's a lot of anti-control cards here in the builds. So we've just got a couple Assassin's Trophies to help us out against Todd's gigantic dinosaurs, and we're cutting what I think is the worst creature in the deck, and that is Glowspore Shaman. Yeah, I'm, I've never been a huge fan of Glowspore Shaman. I think um, the moment that people realized that Murfo Branchwalker was just a slightly better version of it, basically, yeah. uh, and it allowed you to enable Wild Growth Walker, that was the moment that these Golgari graveyard decks really picked up steam almost a year ago when uh guilds of ravnica came out uh from my side we're going to be bringing flame sweep ross has a ton of creatures that die to it and if you pay closer attention to the card and even our director rob was unsure all creatures take two damage from your opponent's side it, it's not a non-flyer clause from that respect um it only doesn't hit your creatures that have flying so it's uh, kind of like a fiery cannonade but it actually kills stuff like Siren Storm Tamer uh, because it's not pirate oriented, which is yes. pretty cool. So definitely a, an upgrade there for non pirate decks to be able to kill Siren Storm Tamer and things like that out of the mono blue deck. Even the the new pirate, um, the the ghost pirate. Whatever. Yeah, can't remember the name. Can't remember the name of it. Anyway, we're bringing that to basically clean up um, uh, the the small creatures from Ross's side. But it also triggers enrage uh, stuff from my side, which is pretty cool. Veil of Summer is not particularly good in this matchup, but uh, it does protect some of my larger creatures from Ravenous Chupacabra. And at any point, Ross just casts a black spell. I can just spin a green and cycle it if I really want to. So uh, I think there's a, a lot of upside to this card. There's really yeah, a lot to I, like about it. I agree. That, that aspect of the card where it's not going to just languish in your hand mm -hmm. when you draw it later in the game uh, is really nice. It's weird that you can't cycle it immediately, or, or not weird, but you know, unfortunate. So it will languish in your hand maybe for a turn or two, but it's never just going to sit there and be horrible. Yeah, and we're just cutting some of our dumb dinos that don't do much in the matchup. I think Shifting Ceratops is one of the worst dinosaurs in the deck unless you're playing against a deck with a bunch of Planeswalkers. Yeah. Also, like the Pro Blue Clause doesn't matter, you know. Yeah. It's it's in that range where like, I can trade with it more easily than I can with some of the bigger creatures, even though it's a little bit more expensive. doesn't draw tar cards like Ripjaw Raptor. Yeah, it's definitely a card that is built to prey on decks that are high on interaction. Right. All right. Anything over there, Rob? Uh, yeah. First of all, thanks. Maybe we're surprised to see you here today, Todd. So do you know when your last episode is? Uh, it's sometime in August, I think. Not a hundred percent. So basically, I have some. I have like some shows uh, for commentary over the next three weeks uh, i'll be basically at every open and then after that i don't have any more shows until like september october something like that maybe even november i'm not even sure when my next show is after that. uh so i'm kind of sticking around callie's actually moving out there next thursday she's flying out next thursday and uh we're just trying to get all of our affairs in order so i'm staying behind a couple more weeks to make sure like you know the cleaners get the house all straightened up and movers get all the stuff moved out uh, I'm guessing 
what month is it? July. <laughs> I'm guessing like August 15th or something. I'm scheduled to do verses longer than that, but I'm sure that Corey and Ross can pick up the slack for me. Yeah, we can. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a couple more before we move on. Yeah, we Let's got go. one here uh, from Half Wing Scene. Uh, do either of you believe that Legends End might be a viable sideboard card, or possibly even main deck card for hitting things like Wild Growth Walker, uh, Krasis, Hero Precinct One? What is this card? Is that the uh, kill it's black one in a black? Uh, yeah, cards destroy not. target creature commander and cost two or less, and then you you kill all with the same name, and then your opponent reveals their hand, and if they have any, they then discard that card. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like that card a lot. It's Definitely a solid card. Not something that you can play in super high numbers. But it's, right? It kills all the ones that with the same name in play too, right? So yeah. Like, yeah. So it just sweeps up all the tokens. Yeah. If there's a bunch of tokens. I, I like that aspect. It feels a lot like a really cheap uh, detention sphere for a different color. Um, the fact that it also gets the one in their hand, though, that's kind of cool. But being a two-mana sorcery that's killing two-mana things, mm-hmm. you know, the the... There is some downside there, especially if you are on the play. Like, you can't instant speed trade your spell for their two drop. Yeah. So it's not going to be a card that's going to be the bread and butter of your removal suite in reactive decks. But it's a powerful enough effect in certain situations that you're going to want access to it. So it, it'll be around in, you know, one, two, three. But I, it's not going to, depending on certain metagames, but it's not going to be a consistent, you know, three or four. Yeah, I mean, I, I think something like Cast Down is probably just more a safer pick for the main deck. But that card's going to be gone soon, right? So Yeah. When, when was Cast Down? Dominaria. Yeah, it's oh. going to be gone in a couple months, so. Yeah. I guess it's weird to me that Dominaria is so long ago. But uh, it, it's it's definitely a card that we'll see constructed play. You know, mm. it is quite good. I mean, it's also better as uh, you get into older formats, too, because the, the overall curve of, of decks decreases over time. So in something like Modern or Legacy, the odds that someone's going to play a one or two mana creature is, like, way higher, right? So, yeah. But then it being a two mana sorcery is worse. That's true. That's true. But it's a permanent answer to something problematic, like a thing in the ice or whatever. So Yeah. Really cool. Well, I am uh, I'm taking a mulligan there. My opening hand had all threes and only two lands. But we are moving on to the London mulligan now that that is the official way that yeah. things are going. And I think we will put this seven drop on the bottom of our deck. Okay. I'm on the play because I lost game two. The shock and the commune. Let's, uh, talk talk to the talk to the friends and figure out which which friend we want to come with. So our hand is reasonably stocked, but. We, we need to curve a little bit better. I need a land, kind of. What is the Dino Council bequeathed upon you? Is that the, is it, these are the options, basically. And my hand... You said you needed a land. No, I know, but... You does know, this I'm not putting, get lands? It does. Yeah. It's land or dinosaur. I have one more land and a, and a marauding raptor. So if I take a land, I'm not going to have anything to do on three. But if I take... I think I just want to take Galta because it's better long game based on my hand. And if I do miss a land on three, I can play another commune and maybe find a land. So I just kind of want to go rip draw to have that uh, turn two marauding raptor, turn three rip draw potential. I think I'm going to do that, actually. If I miss, I'll just commune again. All right. Here we go. Let's play Temple of Melody. Okay. And is that? Good? I don't think so. Might be the first time I've ever heard that phrase in a not condescending way. Is that good? <laughs> There's another temple. Oh. All right, 16. I'm really hoping to find Wild Growth Walker. I did not. I'm really hoping to naturally draw land. Play a supplier. Okay. Get a couple creatures in there. Play tapped overgrown tomb and pass the turn. Come on, deck. Come on. Okay, um, so I'm basically just looking for lands off of this. Okay, I guess I just want more red because I have very few actual black cards in my deck. And then we'll play a tap and attack for two. 18. Your turn. Okay, well, I definitely want something that can trade with that Marauding Raptor next turn. So let's attack for one. You go to 17 and play I'm a Jade. I'm at 15. I shocked twice. Oh, you shocked twice. Okay, so you're at 15. I'm at 18. Then I'll play a Jade Light. Mm-hmm. Hopefully not hit two lands. Ooh. 
Okay. Cool. Yeah, I definitely want a removal spell, so let's keep that there. All right, let's draw a card. Yep. And I'll just say go. No attacks. Okay, let's play Blood for Bone Sacking Stitcher Supplier. So now we get to mill three with the Blood for Bones on the stack. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Did not want to mill over all my Blood for Bones. Mm. Uh, so I am going to return the Boulder Hulk to play for sure. And then, uh, which one do I want in my hand? Probably the Branch, branch Walker. Yeah. Didn't really hit anything. Wood Lance Cemetery back. Yep. I guess I could hit the supplier and recast it immediately, but it's not really doing me a lot of good to have that. Yeah. No, not a good mill three there off that supplier, unfortunately, but we do have a six six now. And land you with a land you can cast a Galta. But I do have a trophy for that, so. Got a couple options here. All right, I'm gonna pump this. Oh no! I cast a gulp to I'm gonna attack with just this. So by pumping it, I create a eight, ten. This is two. So he's gonna kill this, but we still have a decently stocked hand. If he wants to trade here with that, I'm okay. We get seven toughness, so he has to double yeah. to kill. And then we actually get to kill both and draw a card. Uh, you wouldn't kill both. I have, no, I have, no, I have nine Eight, toughness. Six, 79. You're right. Okay. Oh, well. So you draw a card and kill one thing. Probably the Molder Hulk. Yeah. Um, given that my Molder Hulk is bigger than the Raptor anyway, I think I'd rather just take this and go to 10. Okay. Yeah, because he's probably going to trophy the Galta. Okay, not a bad draw. Um, let's play Memorial and use our mana by playing a Vulture. Sure. So you can gain one, two, three, three. life. Wow, that's good. 13. I got a 13 and oh, pass the turn. We can wait on this trophy. All right, let's go. Ooh, actually, uh, hold on. Sorry. I was thinking we could wait on the trophy, but Veil of Summer exists now. Yeah, yeah, I'm tapped out, so if you... Yeah, so I should do it now. I was worried about you casting another Galta, but I'm going to do it when you attack anyway. You can just cast it post-combat. So let's just do that now. Okay. Does somewhat accelerate him, but getting my trophy Veil of Summer would be an dis absolute disaster. You All right. Cut. You're good. Draw. I put the card back that I drew... So this triggers to a six. Yep. I think I just say go. Okay, let's play this branch walker that you know about. Right. Actually, maybe I'm supposed to memorial back the wild growth walker. Mm. Yeah, I don't hate that. And play it. That'll set me up for next turn. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay. Especially because I have another memorial to play this turn. All right. And you're up. You got two cards in hand. I know Branch. Yes. This could be a pretty big turn for Todd if he has another Galta. You know, maybe Rotting Regisaurs. Just having all the things have haste could set up a big turn. And I'm at 13. I know. Okay, shove.
Gulpa was a good draw last turn. <laughs> Don't think I can beat a Galta. Um, so this is, these are all fours. And this is three. Problem is the Wild Growth Walker does not, neither of these block effectively. And I could go to one and block four things, you know. I have a collision. I'm pretty sure you're dead. Oh, if you have a collision, I'm dead. Okay. I, I was actually just not, I was just going to wait for you to block, but I'm pretty sure there's no block to get out of it. Yeah. Because this is so big with trample already. So any way you slice it. So let's see. If you put this here, this is six. Then you just go here. That's 14. Mm, probably here. Or yeah, here. That's even better. That's, that's eight, six, so six ten, 10, and then six, six is 16. 16. Yeah. Yeah. We had flame sweep too. I wasn't sure how that was going to work with like this. It would have been so if I didn't have the the Colossus, right? I can actually go flame sweep to knock two toughness off of whatever blocks Galta, but also draw a card off a of rip draw, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, could have also flame sweeped before I blocked, and it gets rid of one of my blockers. Mm -hmm. Galta was a very big. So <laughs> Galta was a very big. Uh, <laughs> Definitely needed more removal on my side to contain the battlefield early and stop those Galtas for a while. Yeah. Um, with the, the one game where I was able to contain your aggression early is when I had Wild Growth Walker going from turn two, and that was the game I won. Uh, but, you know, the the sideboard is definitely more focused towards spell-based decks and not big creatures. I've also had some, had some Master Girls, which is nice with Blood for Bones. Yeah. But just not very cool. good in this matchup. Sure. I, I have to have the one toughness creature <laughs> to start the chain. Yeah, that's fair. Um Master Girl is only on the trigger, right? It's not like yeah. when it's in play, everything you no, kill. No, just, just all one trigger. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of the Blood for Bones deck, but I, it kind of feels like the original iterations of the Golgari deck that we tried out uh, last year, where, um, you know, the, the graveyard-related shenanigans should basically come secondary to doing the powerful stuff. Yeah. But Blood for Bones is so good that it, it, it might just override that. But I'm not sure that... You know, specifically, you want Molder Hulk. Like, maybe you just want to focus on the the Wadgrith Walker package and then actually just play a bunch of, um, you know, good good cards. Like, you know, cut, cut the Glow Spores, cut the Molder Hulks and the... Yeah, the, the, the Gorging just, Vultures. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that you actually need the Enablers. Like, the, the Golgari decks just naturally put stuff in the graveyard with the Explore package. But, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not sure how good or bad that is. Though. But Blood for Both definitely feels sweet. Yeah, I agree. That card felt good, but a lot of the enablers were weak. Every time I played Gorging Vulture, it was just it was like playing a limited card in a constructed game, which is basically what I was doing. Right, but I mean that's basically what happened with Wild Growth Walker. You know, like at some point, like no one really took it seriously until you know the Golgari decks all realized that the Explore Creature put stuff in the graveyard, and then yeah. and then once that happened, they're like, oh crap, Wild Growth Walker is actually pretty good, yeah. and now it's just in like every deck. So, uh, more of the story. If you want to reanimate stuff, play Command the Dreadhorn. I do have one on the deck. Yeah. But it, it's just, I think the moral of the story is just don't get too cute. And this deck is just overboard on underpowered enabler cards. Mm -hmm. And the synergies, even with those enabler cards, don't come online fast enough in order to make the downside of playing those weak cards, uh, you know, palatable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe there is a way to go away from them to some degree while still retaining Blood for Bones as a, just a powerful card. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, especially with things like Ravenous Chupacabra and with the Explore package of creatures. So uh, I don't think you have to go that overboard. I agree with you there. And uh, I would rather explore something like that. Maybe you still play like Stitcher's Supplier to set it up uh, just as one concession. Uh, that That's probably the one I, w I would go I mean, with. I would probably go more towards, uh, what's the play crafter? Yeah, I'd probably just move towards like that engine where... You just have a, a bunch of self-contained sacrifice stuff that gets you value instead of playing, like, mill stuff. Like, I just think cards like Stitcher's Supply and Glow Sports Shaman are so bad on rate that when you start trying to pair them against other just normal standard decks, like, if you're not working on all cylinders, like, your deck just doesn't do anything. I'm less thinking of it as a way to stock the graveyard, though it does do that, and that's helpful uh, in a lot of games, and more thinking of it as a card that sits on the battlefield that I can sacrifice to a uh, Blood for Bones. Yeah, but you already have, like, eight Explore creatures that you don't care if they die. So, I'm, you know, I, I'm not I'm not certain. Like, you have, you can play, like, four rounds, Chubacabra, eight Explore creatures, and then, like, the second Wild Growth Walker, if you don't have another Explore creature, is always bad, too. So, like, 
Uh, you have plenty of things to sacrifice, and I'm, I'm pretty confident we can find some stuff that is fine to sacrifice, like that also just sits in play and is okay. Yeah, th I think you need to find something to that end. I, I like, would even think even Seeker Squire is fine. I think just go just, just go <laughs> ham what, on exploring. I mean, that's the original iterations of Gregari all did that, you know. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, as far as the dinosaur deck is concerned, the, the Black Splash might feel out of place, but I actually quite like it. I don't think the deck has a lot of great three drops other than uh, the, the Rotting Regisar. And, like, I don't really like Thrashing, thrashing Brawn on that much. Um, I don't think you have a use for raw lands, so I don't remember the name of it, but the one that gets lands when you enrage it doesn't seem like it's that good. Ranging Raptor? Something like that. That sounds about right. Um so, yeah, the Black Splash makes sense, and with Unclaimed Territory, it's, like, pretty easy on the mana. Yeah, I never saw you struggle that hard. Sometimes you had to shock a couple times, but... Yeah, but that's most three-color decks in the yeah. format. They're going to shock once or twice a game. The 7-6 body looked big. Yeah, it was very big. And this is... I'm playing against a deck that has a million chump blockers. Like, imagine, like, turn three giving your, your Rotting Registrar a haste and attacking down, like, a Narset or something at the very least... You know, or just chunking your opponent for almost half their life total. So, I don't know. I think uh, the card in this deck is just gives you that really big hammer yeah. to, to play on three. And it's a big, dumb card, right? Just also makes Galta really easy to cast. Like, you were, you never had issues casting that. You, yeah. Just the volume of giant creatures. You know, I could usually contain one, maybe yeah. two, and then you would play a third and even a fourth. And then your other small creatures would all be four fours. Yeah. Uh, so, the, the battlefields can get out of control. Marauding Raptor continues to impress... Uh, I think you know that has been the the key card in all of these dinosaur decks more yep. so than shifting ceratops. Agree. Marauding raptor just I've never seen a, a mana creature attack for that much damage. I think I attacked for eight once with yeah, like geez, attack for eight. Geez. <laughs> all right, let's take a couple of questions before we move on to the next match arena. Sure, we got one from I'm so nicey. Uh, do you think is it Phoenix will do well in standard SCG Worcester? Uh, it didn't really gain a whole lot, as far as I know. I haven't really seen a lot of people posting on a on arena deck list. There wasn't any in the deck dumps. Um, you know, the deck struggles on occasion against the Esper decks just because both the Fairy Time Raveler and Narset are pretty good against it if they don't ever tick down. So, I mean, it's possible, but the fact that it didn't have a great showing until the Invitational... Um, Leads me to believe that it's not going to have that much of an impact I, this weekend. Well, most I don't think people are going to play it. It's not that it's not good. I just don't think anyone's going to play it. I think it, it's going to struggle against the, this influx of gruel based decks. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't very good against gruel in the previous season, and now we've got these dinosaur decks that are gruel based and these elemental decks that are gruel based. Neither of them seems like good matchups for an Is It Phoenix. Yeah, and if they move towards like Fry in the sideboard instead of just maxing out on Lava Coils or Fight with Fire, like there's a chance you just get Yeah, clowned. now your Kefnets aren't particularly good. Yeah. They still have good answers to Crackling Drake. So uh, I am I think that's where Is It Phoenix is taking the hit. Uh, and it, that, you know, it's just not going to match up well against those creatures. You know, green creatures match up well against red removal because... Red rules based on sizing and green creatures are really big. Yeah, so sometimes it's not that not that deep. I mean, how does the Phoenix ever beat a friggin' seven six on turn three with haste? Yeah, so big. Okay. A really good beacon bolt. Yeah, and yeah. This this deck is also almost completely immune to the card shock, which is silly. Uh, the fact that Marauding Raptors has three toughness, so that it doesn't kill the second Marauding Raptor. I guess is the yeah. is the joke. But it also just doesn't die to shock and like puts them under a lot Should of pressure. Should have been a 2-2 that deals 1 to the creature, I think. I don't know. Sure. Whatever. Uh, Next. Uh, what about uh, Doom Whisper in the Skalgari deck? Do you think that could maybe be a missing piece as well? Be big. It's an interesting one because it definitely just sets everything up. Mm -hmm. you, know, you play you play Doom Whisper and you just find the blood for bones or mill over the creatures that you want to hit or just you know dome them with a gigantic lot with giant. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. Sure. I yeah. think if you cut some of the weaker enablers and play some Doom Whisperers, and then you've just got a big flyer too, so you can just you know stall the ground out with all these chump blockers and bash them for six and race them with one lot with giant. You know, back when guilds came out, um, Doom Whisperer was actually my pick for best card in the set. It was just so big with no drawback and really powerful abilities and size, and I was just like, what the heck. Um, and like every game I cast it, my opponent died. 
I, you know, and that was back before the decks got really tuned and yeah. not a lot of people were main decking like three or four rabbit chupacabra or whatever. So it was a lot better, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously good in a graveyard style deck and with, with wild growth Walker, like you just have a bunch of extra life to pay sometimes. So sure. Sign me up. Yeah, I'm in. All right. Next. Uh, Corey B. MTG wants to know, oh, who's are that? you afraid of losing your marbles to me on Thursday? Well, I still have to win them today. If Roth beats me today, you don't get to play for the marbles on Thursday, yeah. sir. He didn't get to play for the marbles last week. Yeah. We're just going to keep them from him. Yeah, we're just, yeah, just going to keep away. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, we're going to end it there. We got two more matches on the docket. We're going to take a short break here while we get that set up for you. What's next? What we got next? We are playing uh, a nice little ramp mirror. Oh. We got a... a Do you really pit... Simic deck versus Simic deck? Simic deck versus Gates deck. Versus a Gates deck? Ooh. Okay. So uh, tell, we'll go get into the decks more, but what's the key card of your Gates deck? Scape Shift. Scape Shift. That's scary. All right. Key card of my deck? Nissa. No. <laughs> no, it's Omniscience. Mm. You were not uh, playing the Omniscience oh, deck. You, oh, you changed it. That's fine. You're, you're playing the ley, the ley Line deck. Okay. Yeah, we're playing uh, the Green Ley Line, Ley Line of Abundance. Uh, should be a lot of fun. We're going to take a short break here, though. We'll be right back for more Versus Live. Mm-hmm. 